Okay, in this video, we're going to cover the question of what is the difference between a regular trig function and an inverse trig function, and what are we going to use them for? So we're really just going to be comparing one aspect of trig functions and, and inverse trig functions. Now, you know, what is a trig function to begin with? Basically, it's just a ratio of the sides of a right triangle, always producing some kind of a, uh, again, a ratio or a decimal that's consistent. And again, you know about SOHCAHTOA, which means that the, the three main uh, trig functions are sine, cosine, and tangent, at least the one that we're going to cover in this class. Now, inverse trig functions are a way of finding the angles in a right triangle, whereas a regular tri uh, trig function, which is just sine, cosine, and tangent, are how to find the sides of a right triangle. So think of regular trig as finding lengths and inverse trig functions as finding the actual angles. Now let's apply that. And again, remember there's, there's a lot of other things that we could talk about in terms of trig functions and inverse trig functions, but those are the two things that we're going to focus on here. Now let's apply that to this particular problem and decide which one of these we're going to end up using. How long would a ladder be if it were leaned against a building that were 40 uh, feet high uh, at an angle of 50 degrees. Which are we going to be using, a regular trig function or an inverse trig function? Well, remember that trig functions find the sides, and this is basically a side of a right triangle. Matter of fact, it's the hypotenuse of a right triangle. We happen to know that this is 90 degrees, right? And if that's 50, we already know that this is what? 40 degrees, so we can just fill that in. So we already know the angles, but what about the sides? Well, we need to use a regular trig function to do that. So let's, let's go down here. We can say that we know that according to SOHCAHTOA, right, remember this little mnemonic device that's really handy for you to learn. This is the sine of an angle, the sine of any angle, and that's called theta, which means angle, is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So opposite side over the hypotenuse, I'll just abbreviate it hypo, cosine or ka, we would say cosine not cos, but cosine, theta, which again represents angle, is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So let's just write that in here. The adjacent side, which means next to, over the hypotenuse. And finally, t, or to, or tangent, of the theta, it would be equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. So the opposite side over the adjacent side. So basically what you have to do here for this problem is to match up which one of these trig functions would match up to the information that I already have. So in this case I would see that 50 degrees, I know the opposite side right, because it's directly across from 50. So I know the opposite side, and I'm looking for this side here. Okay, we'll just call this side x. So what would be the opposite over the hypotenuse? Opposite over hypotenuse looks like we're going to use the sine function. So let's go fill what we know in. I'm going to fill in the degrees as 50, so the sine, 50 degrees, is equal to the opposite side, which we know is 40 feet, over the hypotenuse, which is our unknown. Okay, so now that we have that, we can just go ahead and use our calculations and figure it out. Now the first thing we have to do is figure out what is the sine of 50 degrees, because remember, trigonometry are, uh, we know what these ratios are. So we can actually go to 
let's turn this on. We can go to this little button here that says sign. And we can say the sign of 50. And there we go. Sign of 50, and that equals 2.262, to, what does that say? 26. Oh, wait a minute, that's actually incorrect. I had it on radians, my, my mistake. Let's make sure that we have that on. Hold on, let me just go ahead and change the mode. We need to make sure that these, make sure that your, um, make sure you see it. Make sure that your, your uh, calculator is set on uh, degrees and not radians, okay? Because it'll give you an incorrect answer. So let's go ahead and do that. Now it's on degrees, enter. And let's go back and redo this. So we said the sine, 50 degrees, is going to be equal to 0.766. Okay, so that's the ratio that we're going to use, or the decimal that we're going to use. 0.766 is equal to 40 over x. That's my step one. That's my step two. Now let's just go ahead and get the x in the numerator. Remember, just go ahead and cross multiply. And I'm going to get 0.766x, remember this is over 1, is equal to 40. Let's divide both sides by 0.766. There's my fourth step. And I get x is equal to 40 over 0.766. Now let's go ahead and do that division and see what we come up with. So 40 divided by 0.766 and I get 52.2 feet. So x is equal to 52.2 feet. Does that make sense? Let's go ahead and put that back over here and see if it actually does. If we have a triangle where this is 40, this is 52.2, and then this is our unknown along the bottom here, right? How else could we find out and see whether this makes some sense? We could use the Pythagorean theorem, couldn't we? Because we know two sides of a right triangle. So I can say that 40 squared plus x squared is equal to 52.2 squared. Let's just do some quick calculations here. 52.2 squared is equal to 2,724.2. We know that 40 squared is 1,600. Subtract both sides. And you're going to get x squared is equal to 1,124.8. Let's take the square root of both sides. And you get square root 1124.84, you get 33.5, which seems a reasonable length to put right here, doesn't it? 33.5 feet. Okay. I hope that was helpful to you. Remember, once you've actually used the trig ratios or the inverse trig ratios, depending on what you're looking for, you can always check it by using the Pythagorean theorem afterwards. Thanks.